Hey guys, today I'm going to be cleaning up a bit of the code we had previously written, and then diving into actually putting the UI into place using the new UI toolkit. So if you see a few new things in the project panel, don't worry just yet, I'll be showing you where to get those files shortly. So we'll start with the Kingdoms Manager. We want to remove the camera and light prefab references we previously set up because we're going to grab these from the resources folder instead. You can find some good references from the resources folder in the Unity documentation, but essentially putting files beneath the folder called resources lets you grab it via code without a reference. Now what we'll do is, based on the game state, the two of which we're using now being the title state and editor state, we want to initialize our camera and light. We call instantiate like usual, but now we could use the resources.load with the location of our resources and then the name of the file. For prefabs, we don't actually need a dot prefab or anything like that, just the actual name of it. We'll also make the camera and the light a child of our kingdoms manager object, so we'll throw in the current transform as the parent. And then just repeat for both scenes and both objects. And to sum that up, Essentially what we're doing is we have our resources.load and we put our location so all cameras will be in prefabs and then cameras and then we just put the name of the camera. I like to add the plus there, not uh it's gonna make it slower because you know you're adding these strings together, you know, but it's gonna be such a small change, it doesn't really matter for what we're doing. I just like to put it there so I know where the name is and where the location is. Just nicer for my eyes and my organization which is a lot of with my style of programming is making it look good for me, not necessarily the fastest option. And then what we have left is we have this type of game object as game object. How do they know what you're bringing in? You know, cause you're just bringing in a file. You're telling it, oh, it's going to be a game object file basically. But yeah, if you don't understand it, that's fine. And obviously our transform is just the actual transform, you know, the position and all that data of this object, this kingdoms manager object that we're working out of where the script is. Now we'll hop over to the UI manager and start adding a panel renderer reference and maybe a style sheet reference in case we want to change the style sheet later. However, I'm not really sure if that's going to be needed. The panel renderer is the most important part, however as that's how we'll actually set up the current UI we want loaded. Then we can go ahead and get rid of our UI type reference. At the moment I'm not sure if we need it and I don't really want to clutter things up if it's not needed. So we'll just get rid of it for now. We'll also want to get rid of the data we've entered in the dictionary as we won't be using the dictionary as it's currently set up. We'll end up storing our UI state methods in it instead of strings, but we will set that up when we actually need it. Uh, I don't see a reason to go ahead and set that up ahead of time and then we have to end up changing it later. Just like with this stuff we ended up having to change. We can go ahead and remove the clear UI reference and the method as well as we won't need that anymore either since that gets handled by the panel renderer which means we can also get rid of the current UI reference as well as where we instantiated the current UI since we're not going to need that. Now that's the end of the code cleanup that we needed to do. Essentially all the changes are because the plan I laid out was for the original Unity UI tools. But with people commenting asking me to try out the new Unity UI toolkit, I figured I'd give it a go because there isn't really anything else on YouTube with it. And I'm sure people want to know how to use it and start working with it since it's just now starting to come out. Now to dive into the UI toolkit, there is a bit of a disclaimer here. It's a preview release. So essentially like an alpha or beta release and so there are bugs and the setup is a bit more than it will be at release. First you'll want to grab the UI elements runtime. I'll have a link to the page in the description. Basically just add the UI runtime folder to your assets folder like you can see on my projects panel. Then you'll want to go up to the window button and then hit package manager. You'll want to find the UI builder in the package manager and install it and make sure it's imported into the project. Uh, you can see that I've already got it installed in mine to save some time. So now you'll head back to the window dropdown and hover over UI toolkit and click UI builder. Now take your time with positioning this wherever you want it. Try to find a good balance between 
you know, seeing your scene view or game view and your UI builder. I just like mine, one on bottom, one on top. It's the simplest way to get it set up. But take your time on that. Once you get it positioned where you want it and everything, we'll go over to the hierarchy and we'll add a new game object named UI, which will get the UI manager that we created in the last few videos added to it. Leave that with the default settings for now and then add a, another empty game object beneath the UI one and we'll name that one UI panel and it'll get three scripts attached to it the panel scaler, panel renderer, and event system specifically the one you see here there is another event system that exists but that's not what you want you want to set the style sheet to default.uss on the panel renderer that's included in the UIE runtime folder that you added in. If you don't add that, you'll get a lot of weird stuff that breaks, like uh, the default button stuff, and anything that's kind of Unity specific, you won't be able to use you know, buttons, uh, input fields, anything like that. So you definitely want to add that. Uh, that was a big problem I had previously. Realized I was missing that, and everything started to work great. Now for the panel scaler, I'm going to scale with the screen size and I'm going to set it to 1920 by 1080 while setting the match to 1. You can kind of play with these settings a bit to get what you want. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I want at this point. You know, until I work on the game further and really start looking at screen size and seeing how things scale, I'm just going to leave it like this. But you know, you can go ahead and play around with it and see what fits what you're going to do. Something I like to do is first align my UI builder canvas to the actual size I'm working with, which is 1920 by 1080 in this case, and just get everything nice and sized how I like it, because I don't want to be fiddling with that later. Once it's perfect, you really don't have to do anything. Then we can actually create our menu. We can do this by hitting File and Save, as on the uh, UI builder. I'll title it something like Main Menu, create a folder called menus to put it in I suppose. Actually I'll go ahead and call that title screen because uh, yeah I just I like the sound of that one better. I guess it doesn't really matter what you call it. It's just better for organization. Now that we've saved that you can actually go ahead and drag it over to the UXML option on the panel renderer. That sets it as the active screen to be rendering. Once that's done you can go ahead and drag a visual element onto the hierarchy this will sort of be a container element. We can go down to the size field in the inspector and make it take up 100% of the parent, in this case the entire screen, since our parent is the entire screen. Now, if we go back up to the top, we can give it a name of container. That way we can reference it from code later on, and obviously we'll call it container because, well, it is a container. Inside the container, we'll want to place our logo. We should be able to just use a visual element for that actually and set the background. Set the name to logo and head down to size once again. And I'll do something like 100% width and 50% height. I'm sure that'll change, but we'll put it there for now. If we go down to background, I can actually set the logo that I have already in the resources folder. Um, I'm not sure if it actually needs to be in the resources folder, but that's just where I'm keeping everything. Um, you can then hit the scaling mode, which is scale to fit. It'll keep the aspect ratio and make everything look good and proper and how the logo should look. Next, we'll want to add in a button, which on second thought, I actually think it would be best if we put it, that inside its own container. So add a visual element to make the parent of the button first. Change the container's name to something like button container and you can fiddle with these options a bit. It always takes me a few attempts to find out what would be right. In my case, I'm thinking 50 width and 50 height. We can mess around with the align a bit too and decide where we want that. In my case, I think I'll center the buttons. Then you can go ahead and actually name your buttons and the first one for me will be called Inter Mirage. Just make sure you don't forget to put your text on it as well. Then, just like everything else, we'll go ahead and start setting the sizes for the button. 
For this, just set the size of your button and you'll also want to do the font size. And you should be good to go. That's really all you've got to do with the buttons. Uh, later we'll get into changing fonts and other things, backgrounds, but this part, you know, we're prototyping at this point. Now if you start duplicating the buttons, you'll notice that we can't fit all the buttons we need. At least in my case, I can't, as I need seven of them for my menu. With them duplicated, we could keep changing each button over and over until we got something we liked, we made it fit, and whatnot, but that could take days. So if you go ahead and delete each additional button now, and just go back to your original button you created, you'll find the style sheet section. Type in a class, uh, button something or title buttons works in this case. Extract it to a new class, then go ahead and click the add to new USS, and now we're good with one class to rule them all. At least we will once we place it somewhere. I'll go ahead and put it in the menus folder and create a folder called USS for it. Now if you go ahead and duplicate your buttons, you'll find you can change them via the title buttons USS and they should all change, which is going to save us a bunch of time compared to what we were doing. Now we can just start fitting things in how we like them. I'll go ahead and speed this up. It's essentially just moving things around until they fit right. It'll be different for each person, each project, that sort of thing. Then we'll start filling in the names for all our buttons and making them you know, say and do what we want them to. Um, and that next part will come by code. So if you'll go ahead and hit play, you'll actually, well, apparently you'll get an error. Let's check and see what we did wrong there. So I'm not actually sure what's wrong. Oh, we haven't set our reference to the UI manager. So if we'll go ahead and set that really quick, that should fix it and we should be able to hit play. All right, so now everything appears to be working. We can mess around with the scaling a bit and just see how things react to understand what's going on. It's not ideal, but it'll definitely work for now. Also, if you notice when you click the button or really any of the buttons, they actually react, so that's really awesome. Anyway, this concludes the fourth part, I believe, of my MMORTS series. If you enjoyed it, well, I'm glad I made something worth watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your days.